Well, first of all, not everything that is about uh, has, has the names international and justice has uh, really anything to do with justice. The commission that you mentioned, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, created under the auspices of Human Rights Council. We didn't participate in this decision and we do not recognize this commission. That's why we do not cooperate uh, with it. So there are a lot of uh, instruments that uh, Western countries are now trying to invent to uh, in the framework of of uh, the uh, rules-based international order that they promote uh, that shouldn't be confused with the international law. So we're looking at this process. Uh, this is kind of sham justice and uh, sham process. Uh, so we don't think that any, anybody has the authority uh, to establish anything on, on Ukraine. And of course, we understand that this is a sham justice because uh, the international uh, authorities, the Western, Pant Western ex-partners ignored our calls to investigate uh, the crimes by, by Kiev regime that were committed uh, during the eight years uh, of um, unjustified war in Donbas <clears throat> against civilian population of Donbas. So it's absolutely clear that there are uh, obvious double standards uh, in these uh, approaches of uh, so-called Western community towards situation in Ukraine. Right. Well, let me, let me give you one example, which certainly seems evident and clear, unless you deny it, which is uh, Russia striking civilian infrastructure in Ukraine outside of the combat zones, as a result, cutting off electricity power for millions of civilians of families as this very cold and bitter winter sets in. Uh, how, how does that, first of all, serve you even your war aims? And how is that not some kind of violation of humanitarian law? Well, unfortunately, infrastructure and the energy infrastructure is not only used for civilian purposes, it's also part of uh, Ukrainian uh, military potential. It's not us who invented this formula. I think this formula was implemented by NATO in 1999 in its aggression against Serbia. And we quoted during Security Council meeting the statement of uh, NATO spokesman at that moment, Mr. Shia, who confirmed that it was strategy of NATO to inflict uh, severe damage to infrastructure of Serbia because it was uh, directly linked to military infrastructure. The same situation is in Ukraine. Unfortunately, we don't have a other way out. Uh, it was, it's not our choice uh, because we hear belligerent uh, calls from Kyiv and the claims that uh, Ukraine uh, allegedly can defeat Russia. So uh, there are also uh, terrorist attacks against infrastructure in Russia. So we, the only way we have to do is to, to respond. And uh, if you mentioned uh, striking uh, civilian uh, objects like uh, residential buildings and so on and so forth, I can tell you that we are only using high precision strikes. We repeatedly uh, uh, cited examples in Security Council meetings that such uh, situations that were demonstrated uh, on Western TV are the result of uh, Ukrainian air defense uh, stray missiles or uh, misuse of uh, air defense uh, capacities uh, by Ukraine. There are a lot of proofs uh, in this regard. So we target only uh, energy infrastructure and military infrastructure. All right. I, I mean, we, there are plenty of journalists on the ground who do dispute that, including some who report for us, but I'll leave it at I that. Know. And a lot of journalists do confirm this as well. I do want to ask you uh, an issue of interest, particularly to Israel, which is uh, the charge that uh, Russia is increasingly using Iranian made, uh, if you want to call them explosive drones or killer drones on the battlefield. And also the concern in Israel that of the growing links uh, on terms of security and military between Russia and Iran and whether that can influence <clears throat> Russia's thinking on other issues. For example, the negotiations or potential resumption of negotiations on the Iran nuclear deal. I don't see any links with the negotiations with the uh, Iranian nuclear deal. I think it's absolutely another situation. As for the things that you cited, so yes, this is a favor favorite uh, fairy, fairy tale of the West right now, alleged uh, contacts between Russia and Iran. We haven't seen any proofs. We repeatedly denied uh, our usage of Iranian uh, drones. Uh, I think that our military industrial complex is, is capable of producing uh, enough weaponry for us, and we don't need anybody else's weaponry. 
The proofs that were allegedly uh, floated in, in Western media, frankly, are laughable. One of them is portrait of President Zelensky standing of something that is uh, claimed to be an Iranian drone, but the users of internet already mocked him repeatedly for this because this is a clear setup uh, and the image was doctored. And I heard that uh, that Iranian uh, colleagues also repeatedly denied uh, any, any uh, deliveries of drones to Russia. So, of course, uh, the Western countries can repeat it again and again, but that doesn't mean uh, the situation, uh, that, that doesn't mean that they prove the situation right. Uh, and uh, about Israel's stance, uh, and I don't know if you can address this, about uh, is it a problem for Russia if, if Israel would supply strictly defensive, uh, say, air defense systems to Ukraine if the new government, for example, should decide to do that? Well, actually, of course, uh, we understand, uh, as I told you, that these uh, defense uh, system, air defense systems, are the source of a lot of casualties by uh, peaceful Ukrainians. Uh, we uh, conducted recently uh, several meetings of Security Council devoted uh, to the issue of supply, supplying of arms to Ukraine. Uh, we, of course, uh, see clear indication uh, that uh, these supplies uh, only, uh, only drop uh, gas uh, to the fire. And, of course, they limit the possibilities of uh, diplomatic settlement of this conflict. So they embolden uh, Ukrainian regime and they cause an enormous number of casualties, unnecessary uh, casualties for Ukraine. If Israel does so, of course, it's up to this country. It's a sovereign country. We can deplore a lot of things. We, we of, of course, can deplore uh, the situation when uh, it was a choice of Israel uh, to turn a blind uh, eye on the situation when the uh, right. when, when there is a heroization of Nazism and heroization heroization of those who committed and perpetrated uh, Holocaust uh, in Ukraine. And so, for political reasons, I understand that this is not a popular topic in Israel. Well, I'm we gonna, can't close I, unfortunately, our eyes we are, on this. Uh, Mr. Polyansky, we are running out of time. I would like to have continued that discussion. I understand that this topic is not very very good for you, so I understand. No, absolutely not. I would have liked to have continued the topic, Dmitry Polyansky. Thanks for joining us on The Rundown.